when I was in the primary school. I started since, since 1948. I've been in school. I didn't get to, you know, they said, uh, you'll be in class 1, go to class 2. When I finished class 1, they put me in class 1A. <laughs> I think I, I started 47. And that time your hands have to reach your ear like this. Then they eventually pushed me to class 2. And my father will beat me at home for, uh, just to study. The teacher will beat me at school to study. But it wasn't, uh, I was wondering why, why all this trouble? Why are, they, why are they tormenting me like this, harassing my life? <laughs> they put me in class 2, uh, 1949. That's, you, that time, they, were, they have not allowed me to go to standard 1, but just to be doing preliminary for primary. So eventually they put me in class 2. Then again, when the others went on, I went to class 2B. <laughs> and then I got to standard 1. Then standard 2. And if, even when we were taking, because those days we had to take exam in standard 2 to go to standard 3 in another, in another village. But even near the exam like this, what was I doing? I was playing and sleeping because we went, for, we went in another place to go and have that examination. And eventually, uh, when we took uh, the exam, 1952, I said, will I pass? Because, you know, I wasn't very sure. And I remember what they asked uh, those days. 1952, they put child, singular. Then they put plural here and put dash. They want you to put children. And I'll be wondering what is, uh, what are we to put here? Is it child or child? <laughs> no, I wouldn't know. Eventually, they said, okay, go to standard three. Standard four. The teacher was so, was so furious with me. And he saw me playing somewhere and laughing. He called me and said, why are you laughing? Of all people. You don't know any arithmetic, you don't know. English, you don't know. Geography, you don't know. Civics, you don't know. Nothing that you know. And you have time to laugh in your, in your life. And he abused me and said dirty, dirty things, more dirty things. I still remember what I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Eventually, I got to uh, five. That time, uh, 35, they, they, they said now, uh, standard 5, uh, they will call them primary 6 now, and they pushed us out of uh, school. They pushed us out, I didn't have secondary school to go. How could I have secondary school to go? I was lazy beyond description. To read was trouble. I, I knew how to play. How to read, I didn't know. Then eventually, uh, and they sent me to modern school. And all I could, all they did in the modern school, the only thing that interested me was the use of watercolor. Just painting. The arithmetic, the English, all the other things. I said, why are they, why are they troubling us with all this? Thing? <laughs> but you know, the watercolor and everything, I like that one. Eventually, my father said, ah, ah, my firstborn in a modern school, you should go to secondary school. Pulled me out of that place again. And then put me in another place, studying for uh, secondary school. I studied and studied and studied. At that time now, I went to a particular a school that was just uh, starting. Well, you know, to get to King's College, in fact, I didn't even take the form. I knew that that would be, you will be wasting the money for the form. And to go to any of these other groups, but the one that just started the previous year, where they want students, where that school is not popular, it's not known very much. But now, if you take exam there, when the other good uh, people, when they choose this, choose this, choose this, and then you will find a, way, a place in this uh, new school. So I got to that new school eventually. Class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, just nothing. They were just pushing me on. You know, in a new school, they want to bring in new students and you know, push you forward. To, it's not government school. But they were all the time writing in the, in the report. If this uh, boy will read, maybe he can do well. Let him work harder. Uh, all those comments depicting laziness. I won't write my notes. All that time when they're teaching them biology or something, I'll be looking for a word. So when we come out, I'll be, I will play with uh, some of those words, uh, just playing with my friends. But to write notes, I'll sit at the back of the class where the teacher will not say I'm not writing notes. I didn't understand life or education or anything. I mean, people were going to school. I was sent to school. I went to school, finished. But 1960, in class four, or on holidays, 
I waited behind. Then I sat down and said, look at my age now. And school start is coming next year. Am I going to live my life like this? So I just changed. During that time, I took the notes of all the others in biology, in chemistry, in physics, and all the other notes they have been writing. I sat down, I wrote everything. I said, now I am going to make this thing. Even ordinary uh, geometry, till class 3, I was still getting 5% in geometry. And uh, algebra, I was uh, lucky, I was uh, getting on well. Cla class, another class, I got 24 in, in uh, geometry. Chemistry, almost nothing, sometimes. Uh, sometimes I get 0% in history, complete zero. Because for that one hour, I will look at the examination paper like this, I will not recognize anything in that question paper. Even till we were in class uh, 4, 1960, I remember the name of the teacher. Sometimes he will not even point at me to ask any question when he's asking questions from all the other people. Because he knew that uh, it was a waste of his time. But that class 4, I sat down I said, this thing that is causing failure, I'm going to rectify it. Nobody talked to me. In fact, they didn't know that I would ever make anything. I just decided, I didn't even know the reason. I, it wasn't because, well, being the firstborn of my father, not, no, I didn't even think of that. Being uh, this or being, I didn't think, it's just that, ah, ah, since primary school. Why am I like this? And yet, if, you, if we are playing and you did anything, I can remember anything we did on the field, anything we did when we are running around. It's the geography I can't remember. And it's the same brain that remembers all these other things that is not remembering this, no, I will change. And that year, 1960, getting to class 5, I passed. Not that, like they were pushing me forward before. Class 5. When, from the first uh, day we opened like this, I wrote all my subjects now, I wrote A1 in front of them. And I put it, every time I'm going to study, I put it down there. And I would get to the class, I would study, I will ask questions from the teachers, I would do everything I ought to do, all the other students would go, ah, say, ah, come away. Ah, well, which one is this? Before, I will run out of the school and go to Children and Seraphim Church, wearing white garment in town, I will leave all the other students. And, be, and go to be dancing, dr beating drum <laughs> uh, in the children and seraphim church in town. But that 1961, uh, I cut off all those things. And I said, this year, school start is coming, I'm going to do something. All the other students will say, ah, and say, come A1, A1, A1. Because I wrote, everybody can say, I just wrote everything down there. And I studied. And you know, I had one of the best results in our class in school start. And when my father said, please, I don't have money to send you to HSC, I, do, I said, don't worry. I picked up at the um, uh, advanced level on my own, and I began to study. And my pure maths, I had A1. Applied maths, I had A3. I went to University of Ibadan. From the University of Ibadan, all through like that, by the time I would come out, I had the best result in the whole university. But that's because 1960, I sat down, I said, this failure that had been following me from primary school up to this point, I'm breaking it. I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't born again. I just said, this one, it will not continue. I'm breaking this one. You should break failure in your life. <laughs> and sit down and think. And don't you, this is not a pretense. No teacher, if all the teachers, if I stayed with what the teacher said, I will never have made anything. They abused me. They cursed me. They did everything. They discouraged me. Well, I just decided on my own that I'm going to change. And I've discovered... That when I was at school, all those times I was failing, the major thing in my life was laziness. That time. The brain was there. The understanding was there. No motivation because a lazy man doesn't have motivation for anything. No forward looking. A lazy man doesn't look forward. A lazy man is just saying, well, uh, he might wish, he might desire, but no strong drive to actually get anything done. He's too lazy to plan his life. And since I knew that was the basic thing, the major thing in my life, when I became a Christian, I distinguished myself. And when I became a Christian worker, I had known that if I will just be up at it, working my fingers to the bone, 
and anything I want to do in the Christian service, I know that if I will not allow this uh, laziness of that time to come back, uh -huh, that I'll make it. You know, people wonder now, why, how can you preach uh, two times on Monday, three times on Thursday, and uh, four times on Sunday, almost every time? <laughs> well, if I was like I was before, to even preach once is trouble. But now, preaching four services, because I had broken that thing in my life since 1960, before I was even converted. And I've discovered that if I don't uh, keep at this thing and be deliberately hardworking on whatever I do, that success will never come. Now, prayer life, you know, laziness alone can spoil the prayer life. Quiet time. Laziness alone, I will do it later. I'll do it. can spoil quiet time. Even pray to know the will of God. On this marriage, I will pray. Is it not a, a God is there? I am here. And God is a simple God. And once I ask him, God will answer. The laziness alone, pushing it forward, I will do it. It can spoil the whole of your life. But thank God, I broke that thing. And this morning, I'm calling on you to please understand that every one of us can succeed. But you must now check up your own life personally. Personally. Not relating it with brother so and so, sister so and so. On a personal basis. And say, if this sin has been causing my lack of success. Not having what I dreamt to have, desired to have. What is it that is causing it? I'm going to remove it. And I believe it will be removed in your life. And uh, this message alone. You will say... Well, I thank God. You know, in those days, my teachers didn't change. 1960. The same uh, man that was teaching the history, he was still the same man. The same man teaching the geography, teaching the mathematics. All of those people were the same. The classroom did not change. Our library books, uh, you know, the library was still the same. All the conditions were the same. I was the only person that changed. Because I changed, even though conditions around me remain the same, because I changed, everything in my life changed. Until today, that change is still following after me. Things around you may not change in life. Circumstances, environment, uh, your brain, everything may remain as they have been. But if you will have a change, success is in front of you.